So I'm with Brant Petrie, uh, who is a research professor at the Augustan Institute, prolific author. He's written all kinds of things, and he has a series out on St. Joseph called The Hidden King. And we just recorded a full podcast on this. You can check that out at MatthewSLeonard.com, and it'll be up on YouTube as well. Uh, so check it out for the really great stuff. One of the things that we did not talk about, which is one of the most uh, interesting questions, I think, to a lot of people, is... How old was St. Joseph? Like, was he this old man? Uh, was he like with a cane and all this artwork that we see and, you know, super old and he's got this young wife? Who was he, Brent? How should we imagine St. Joseph? Yeah, this is a great question. I don't know about you, but growing up Catholic, I just remember holy cards or art depicting St. Joseph. And one of the reasons, frankly, as a young man, I never kind of felt all that drawn to him is because he's always depicted as being really, really old, as an yeah. elderly man, as an old man. And so um, over the years, as I've taught, one of the most frequently asked questions I get is, well, how, how old exactly was St. Joseph? Because you you hear some Catholics say, oh, well, he was an older man. Some Christians, too, Eastern Christians, they have a tradition of him being older. And then some other Catholics say, no, 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 I imagine him as a young man. I don't like the idea of, a, of Joseph as an old man. So what's the, what's the story here? And at the end of the day, whether you like it or not, it's not really what's important. The question is, what does the New <laughs> Testament tell us, right? Does it give us any information? And most people would say, well, the New Testament doesn't say anything about the age of St. Joseph. That's what I would have said even just a year ago before I started researching, right? Because unlike Jesus, which it tells us in Luke's gospel, he was 30 years old, it never gives us an exact age count for St. Joseph. But what I noticed in studying for this particular series on the Hidden King was that if you read the New Testament very closely, it does give us a clue to how old Joseph was. It does tell us how old he was, but you have to look at it with first century Jewish eyes. So real quick, if you just look... Uh, in Luke chapter 1, the answer is in Luke chapter 1 and Luke uh, chapter 1, verse 18 and verses 26 to 27. This is the two accounts of the Annunciation, one to Zechariah and one to uh, Mary. The Annunciation of the angel Gabriel to Zechariah is about the birth of John the Baptist. The Annunciation to Mary is about the birth of Jesus. And what's fascinating here is that Luke's gospel uses two different Greek words to describe Zechariah and Joseph. So when the angel appears to Zechariah, it calls him a presbutes. That means an old man, right? I think most of us are aware of that because of the context of, you know, how's this going to happen? I'm an old man. How am I going to have a child when I'm an old man, right? And then the angel goes on to, you know, punish Zechariah for doubting and whatnot. But when it comes to St. Joseph in verse 26 to 27, Luke doesn't use that word. Listen to what he says. Quote, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man, in Greek, Aner, whose name was Joseph. Now, uh, there's an ancient Jewish writer named Philo, who's from the first century AD. He's a contemporary of Jesus. And he actually tells us that in first century Judaism, those two terms, there were specific connotations for ages associated with the Greek words uh, for different age levels of a man. So, for example, he says that um, he says that when when a guy's in his like when he, when he's between eighteen and twenty seven, he's called a neoniskos, a young man. Okay, but when he's from age twenty eight to forty nine, he's called an aner, a man. And then from age forty nine all the way into fifty six, he's called a presbutes, an old man. Right. So. I am a man, right? You're still a man, but you're going to be an old man sooner than I will, right? <laughs> um, according to Philo. So what, what he's saying here, this is really important. When Luke describes Joseph as an honor, he can't mean that he's an old man because he just used the word presbytes for Zechariah. If he had wanted to tell us Joseph was old, he would have had to use the word what? Presbytes, elder, old man. By telling us he's an honor, according to Jewish writings at the time of Jesus, we can know that Joseph would have been somewhere in his late 20s, his 30s, or his early 40s. In other words, Joseph is a man in his prime. So let me, let me say something about that then, because that has big implications then for what his marriage to Mary looks like, does it not? Absolutely, absolutely. So um, this, is, this is very, very important. One... Uh, Somebody might be thinking, well, hold on, weren't there traditions in the early church that Joseph was an old man, right? In fact, I've heard 
that he was a widower and that he had children from a previous marriage. And that's true. Later in the church, when you get to the time of the apocryphal gospels in the second and the third and the fourth century, there were writings outside the New Testament, like the Proto-Evangelium of James, that claimed that Joseph was a widower, um, that he was in his 90s. <laughs> when he married Mary, um, and that he had children from a previous marriage, the Simon and Joseph and Jude, the, the, the so-called brothers, brothers of Jesus. Yeah. That's exactly right. So uh, the reason those apocryphal traditions arose is because as Christianity became more Gentile and further away from Judaism, when Gentile readers would encounter the brothers of Jesus in the Gospels, they knew from ancient tradition, that Mary wasn't just a virgin when she conceived, but that she was perpetually virgin. Yet they see these brothers of Jesus in the Gospels. So later Christians in the Apocrypha came up with the hypothesis and explanation to account for their existence. And they said, oh, the way we account for this is that Joseph must have been a widower and that the so-called brothers of Jesus were children of his from a previous marriage. So they, they make Joseph a lot older both to explain the existence of the brothers of Jesus, but also, and this is really important, to protect the perpetual virginity of Mary. Because some of the ancient Christian writers just couldn't wrap their brains around a man in his prime being married to a young woman and yet living with her in chastity and in virginity. But the, the reality is, Matt, that's what the New Testament describes. If Joseph is a man in his prime, and as I show, um, I cover this, I don't have time to go into this detail, but in my book, Jesus and the Jewish Roots of Mary, I have a whole chapter on the brothers of Jesus showing you that these men who are called his brothers are actually the children of a another woman named Mary, who Matthew calls the other Mary, and her husband, Clopas, who's mentioned in John 19, who is the brother of Joseph, right? So in other words, the brothers of Jesus are his cousins. There's no need to posit Joseph being a widower in order to explain their existence, right? In fact, uh, the woman called the other Mary is mentioned at the tomb. The mother of James and Joseph, who are called the brothers of Jesus, she's alive at the crucifixion. So there's no way she can be Joseph's wife, because then he wouldn't be a widower. I mean, he'd be a polygamist. He'd have more than one wife. And nobody <laughs> thinks that. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to be flippant, but it's true, right? right? right. So if, if the mother of the brothers of Jesus is alive at the crucifixion, then she can't be Joseph's wife, which means Joseph and Mary, uh, and Mary are uh, have a virginal marriage, right? And Joseph does that as a man, not as an old man, but as a man in his prime, somewhere in his either his late twenties, his thirties, or his early forties. Which for me changes the way I think about his whole relationship with her and his whole journey in the Gospels that we see. Uh, yeah, and it, it obviously uh, puts more beauty behind his title as the most chaste spouse. Right? Yeah, and, that's and, a great point. Yeah, so the litany of Saint Joseph, one of his titles is most chaste spouse. And that really is his vocation, to be the most chaste husband of the Virgin Mary. And also, frankly, too, to be a man who in his prime travels to Egypt, right, in the dead of night with the you know, danger of robbers and all those things. He's got to be the protector of Mary and Joseph. And so it's fitting, Mary and Jesus, sorry, it's fitting that he would not just, that he would not be an elderly man, but that he would be a man in his prime. And look, at the end of the day, whether you like the idea of Joseph as old or not, or whether you like him younger, according to the New Testament, read in its first century Jewish setting, Joseph's not an old man. He's just a man. He's a man in his prime. That's great stuff. And if you want to hear more about this, uh, two things to do. One, you can go check out the Hidden King series at BrantPetrie.com. And uh, Brant and I just, as I said, recorded a full podcast on this topic where we get into a lot more of this kind of thing. And you can find that at MatthewSLeonard.com or wherever you listen to your podcast typically. Brant, thank you very much. Fascinating as always. Look forward to talking to you again. Thanks, Matt. My pleasure.